life is very short <clears throat> if you're a young person you you might not realize how fast life is I mean I was a young person now I want now these days I wonder where did all the time go two people die every second every tick on your watch two people die and leave this world and go into eternity that's 7,000 per hour 172,800 per per day 64 million a year people die and leave this world and go into eternity but I think about these things all the time and maybe you should too because we all have an appointed time and you'll say well well that sucks and it and it does death sucks the Bible says that the last enemy that Jesus will destroy is death death is swallowed up in victory the victory of Jesus Christ Jesus left us a roadmap so to speak to follow he also left us some good news and some bad news now the bad news is is that without Jesus we are already dead in trespasses and sins the Bible says that all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God and that there is none righteous not even one and that the wages of sin is death that's in Romans chapter 6 verse 23 the Bible says that it is appointed unto man to die and then the judgment Hebrews 9 27 the Bible also says that God has always existed that he's uncreated that he's holy good and perfect and when he made this world he put man on it just like himself holy good and perfect and then somewhere along the line man was deceived and he fell him and all of his posterity into a life of constant sin separated from God for all eternity until Jesus Jesus came and he bridged that gap he has reconciled man to God his father the Bible says that while we were God's enemies, we have been reconciled to him through the death of his son. Romans chapter 5 verse 10. The good news is that God loves you and that the gift of God is eternal life. Romans 6 23. We can see the love of God through his son, the Lord Jesus. God sent him to bring us this good news and he brought it in person Hebrews chapter 1 verse 2 says in these last days he has spoken to us through his son that his son is the radiance of God's glory and the exact representation of his being Romans 5 8 says that God demonstrated his love for us in that while we were still sinners Christ died for us there's a man named Nicodemus and Jesus told him that the Son of Man must be lifted up. This term lifted up is translated hypuso and it literally means to be crucified. And John continues and he says, For in this way God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. There's a woman named Martha. Jesus told her, I am the resurrection and the life and whoever believes in me though he dies yet shall he live and everyone who lives and believes in me shall never die do you believe this Martha and she said yes Lord I believe and then Jesus raised him from the dead Lazarus from the dead Jesus left us a way to follow him he says I am the way and the truth and the life and then nobody comes to the Father except through me. Remember, there is 173,800 people that die every single day. It just simply goes against the character of God to leave man in this human predicament that we find ourselves. That is to live these short, brief lives and to die and go into eternity separated from God. If you are not a Christian and afraid of dying, you should be afraid your fear is justified I was there before because when when you die you go straight to judgment it is appointed unto man to die and then the judgment Hebrews chapter 9 verse 27 but if you are a Christian then you are born again by the Spirit of God you will not be judged because you have crossed over from death to life that's John chapter 5 verse 24 you will never be condemned for your sins there is no condemnation 
for those who are in Christ Jesus. Romans chapter 8, verse 1. Why? Because Jesus was condemned in my place, in your place, our place. There is no more condemnation. Our condemnation, our judgment, and the wrath of God that was intended for us is was poured out on Jesus on that cross. There is nothing left to be condemned for the Christian. It stops with Jesus. God made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that in him we might become the righteousness of God. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21. The curse of sin, the power of the law, has no hold on the child of God. So, if the Son sets you free, you are free indeed. That's Roman, uh, John chapter 8, verse 23. So, that's the good news, in a nutshell, that Jesus preached and died for. And Paul says, if you declare with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Romans chapter 9, verse 10. Listen to what I'm saying. Jesus is not dead. Jesus is alive. And some people say, well, that was 2,000 years ago. Yeah. Can you say eternity? 2,000 years is nothing in God's timetable. The Bible says that we have no excuse. That God has revealed himself since the creation of the world through his creation. Romans chapter 1 verse 20. And now in these last days, through his son, Jesus, Hebrews 1, 2. So I ask you, or ask yourself, is Jesus in your heart? Invite him into your life as your Lord and Savior. Put your trust in him. Ask him to forgive you of your sins and he will forgive you and give you the gift of the Holy Spirit. Get born again. Join the family of God in Christ Jesus. Cultivate a prayer life. Start reading your Bible. Find a church that preaches the gospel and teaches the Bible. And I'll see you on the other side. <laughs>